Hello and welcome to the Bitcoin Optech Schnorr Taproot Workshop. Today we're going to talk about Schnorr Taproot, we're going to explain how those proposals work, and we're going to give you a chance to get your hands on the code and actually use these technologies. We're also going to talk about how you can take part in the feedback process for these proposals. So why Schnorr Taproot? Well, when we talk about enhancements in Bitcoin, we often talk about trade-offs, maybe something that's good for privacy is bad for scalability, or something that's good for scalability is bad for functionality on the network. It would be unfair to say Schnorr Taproot is, avoids all of these trade-offs, but it does present a very clear win in three areas that Bitcoin users care about. The first is scalability. It achieves that by allowing multiple signers in a transaction to create an aggregate public key and an aggregate signature. So multi-sig ends up looking like and costing the same to validate as a single signature. In itself, that's a win. Um, as well as that, Schnorr Signature allows batch validation, which means that when downloading the entire blockchain and validating all of the transactions, those signature validations can be done in parallel more efficiently than if they were being done separately. Another win for scalability is that in the majority of cases, when encumbering a transaction with scripts, those scripts don't need to be revealed or evaluated on the network. Clearly, that's a, a great win for scalability. As well as that, Schnorr Taproot is great for privacy and fungibility for exactly the same reasons. Because a multi-signature, an aggregate or threshold signature, looks exactly the same as a sing single signature, it's impossible for anyone watching the network to know whether a transaction was signed by one person, or multiple people, or a threshold of people. In most cases, the scripts encumbering a transaction will not be revealed because the key path will be used. And that, again, is good for privacy. In most cases, advanced transactions like Lightning Channel opens and closes, or advanced contracts, will look exactly the same as a pay to single signature. And finally, Schnorr Taproot is a win for functionality. Because larger multi-sigs are now possible, more advanced contracts can be used on the Bitcoin network. And because scripts are placed in a tree and only the executed branch is revealed, much larger and more complex scripts can be used. As well as that, things like adaptive signatures, tweak signatures, blind signatures, all open new possibilities. So let's talk about Schnorr signatures just briefly. What are the wins? Why, why are people excited about Schnorr signatures? Well, they're better in every way than what we currently use on Bitcoin, which is ECDSA. They're, the encoding in BitSchnorr is more compact than the encoding for ECDSA signatures. Um, they're compatible with existing private keys. They have the same security assumption with a form of proof. And this last point might seem pretty obscure, but it opens up a lot of possibilities. Verification is linear in the public keys and the nonces, which means we can do things like aggregate pub keys and aggregate signatures and tweaking pub keys and signatures, which allows us to embed scripts within a public key. So how does that work in practice? Well, we have Alice, Bob and Charlie. They each have a private key and an associated public key. And they can take their public keys and use some algorithm here. Here we said MuSig to aggregate those to a single public key. And then when they sign, they create partial signatures and aggregate those to create a single signature. So on the Bitcoin network, it looks exactly the same as if one person signed with one key. Taproot allows script trees, which means we can have multiple scripts and place them in a Merkle tree, just like transactions in a block are placed in a Merkle tree. And if we spend that transaction with the primary spending script, we simply provide a proof, a Merkle proof, which consists of that script, the hash of this alternate script, and that's enough to prove that this was in the tree. Obviously, we can have much larger trees than this. And how does that fit together? Well, thank you to BitMEX for this image. We create a public key, we can have a script, or a tree of scripts, and then we tweak that public key with this Merkle root hash. We can then spend that transaction either using the tweak public key or the tweak private key to sign, or one of these script paths with a proof that in fact 
the public key was tweaked with this Merkle tree. What does that look like for an exchange? Well, you might have the, for a two of three multi-sig, you might have the exchange plus a three, the third party key as your public key in Taproot, and then the other two combinations, the exchange plus a cold key, or the third party plus a cold key placed into a tree. You take the root of that, you tweak that public key, and that's what your output looks like. We'll go into all of this in much more detail in the notebooks later. Okay, so that's why we're talking about Schnorr Taproot today, but why is Optech involved? Well, we started Optech in 2018 because we wanted to help Bitcoin companies adopt scaling technology. At that time, we were talking about things like SegWit, transaction batching, RBF, CPFP, but we were always very excited about new technologies coming along, and we think Schnorr Taproot is a fantastic new technology. It's very exciting, and if it does get adopted and activated by the Bitcoin community, it offers huge benefits in terms of scalability for Bitcoin businesses. And finally, why are we running this workshop? Well, we want to help share the current thinking around Schnorr Taproot. It's a proposal, it's not set in stone, and it's changing. And we want to share what the current thinking is right now. We want to give you people, you engineers working at Bitcoin companies, the opportunity to play with that technology. I think it's really exciting, and I think it's more exciting when I get to get my hands on the technology. So these notebooks will give you an opportunity to actually use Schnorr Taproot, create valid transactions, and see how they work. And finally, we want to help you be involved in the community feedback process. Schnorr Taproot is a proposal at this point, and there's no one running Bitcoin, there's no director to say that it will definitely be activated, and we want to give you the chance to take part in the feedback process. Okay, before we get started, a word of warning. Like I've said several times, Schnorr Taproot is a proposal. That means details will change. And in fact, since this notebook, since this workshop was created with the notebooks, some small details of Taproot have changed. There's no roadmap, so I can't say when this will be activated and available for use on the mainnet. And the notebooks in this workshop, the code you see is for educational purposes only. Please don't use it in production. And with that, I'll hand over to Elikai. Thank you.